welcome back to the next lecture in power electronics we were discussing the power diodes previous few lectures we have discussed the different type of loads like the rl load the nc load and the rc load so these type of loads we have already covered now in this lecture we will focus our discussion on rnc load and we will use the power diodes to govern the circuit so in this circuit we have a diode which is connected in a network and the load is made up of resistance inductance and capacitance which is known as rlc load a switch is connected in the circuit which is closed at time t equal to zero the voltage which is applied is basically the dc voltage this is the source the voltage across the inductor is given as vl and the voltage across the capacitor is given as vc the capacitor is having the initial voltage as vc naught and the current which is flowing in the network when the switch is closed is given by i so if we write the kvn equation in this particular loop we find out that the source voltage vs is equal to the voltage of the inductor vn in accordance with the ohm's law the voltage of the resistor is i into r the voltage of the capacitor 1 by c integral i dt at a particular time t and the initial voltage will be given as vc not at time t equal to 0 now this equation 1 can be uh, written in the po differential equation form which is given as d2i by dt square r by l di by dt plus i by lc if we see the order of the differential equation with the maximum order is 2 so it is a second order differential equation this second order differential equation can be converted in the form of laplace function where the function s is the laplace given by d by dt so if we want to write the function for s square so we will be getting as d2i by dt square okay so here the expression is having d2i by dt square so we can write as s square and we can take the i common here so here you have di by dt term so it is r by l into s so s is an indicator indicator of di by dt plus 1 by lc this is known as the characteristic characteristic equation of the second order differential equation the roots of this characteristic equation is given by minus r by 2l plus minus under root r by 2l square minus 1 by ic this is coming from the quadratic equation because this is a second order equation which is the quadratic equation the roots of this quadratic equation can be given in this form where the factor r by 2l is basically given as alpha which is known as the damping factor and the term 1 by under root nc is the omega naught which is the resonant frequency of the system so these roots of this characteristic equation can be written in the compact form as minus alpha plus minus under root alpha square minus omega naught square so the equation of the roots can be written in much compact form in the form of alpha and omega naught there can be three cases occurring first case if alpha is equal to omega naught in that case the roots will be equal equal and the s1 will be equal to s2 this circuit is known as critically damped circuit and the solution has the form i of t is equal to a1 plus a2 t e to the power s1 t here the constants a1 and a2 can be obtained from the boundary equation and here you have only one root or rather two roots which are equal s1 is equal to s2 second case can occur when alpha is greater than omega naught here the roots will be real and the circuit is said to be over damped case solution has the form i of t is equal to a1 e to the power s1 t plus a2 e to the power s2 t case 3 if alpha is less than omega naught the roots are complex and the circuit is said to be under damped in nature the roots are complex minus alpha plus minus j omega r now note here here you have omega r which is known as the ringing frequency or the damped resonant frequency given by 
under root omega naught square minus alpha square. The solution has the form I of t, which is having the cosine expression and sine expression e to the power minus alpha t a1 cos omega rt plus a2 sine omega rt, which is damned or decaying sinusoidal. So, three possibilities can occur in the second order RLC network. Either it can have critically damped system, over damped system, or under damped system. Depending upon this, these equations will be used for estimating the current and the two boundary condition A1 and A2 can be estimated from the current at time t equal to 0 and di by dt at time t equal to 0. So, a switched under damped RLC circuit is used to convert a DC supply voltage into AC supply and the damped resonant frequency. So, when we are using the switching concept and the circuit is under damped, so you will be getting the voltage, DC supply voltage into an AC voltage. The constants here A1 and A2 can be determined from the initial conditions as we have seen. That is, what is the current at time t equal to 0 and what is the di by dt and the condition for t equal to 0. So these two conditions can be used to find the constants A1 and A2. So these constant required two boundary equations, one and the current another di by dt at time t equal to 0 and the ratio of alpha by omega naught is commonly known as damping ratio. So damping ratio given by delta which is equal to r by 2 under root c by l because if we divide alpha by omega naught we will get this expression. Power electronic circuits are generally under damped in nature such that the circuit current become near sinusoidal to cause a nearly sinusoidal AC output and to turn off a power semiconductor devices. So as we are getting the sinusoidal uh, output, you will be having the underdamped system. For critical and underdamped conditions, the current I of T will not oscillate and there is no need for the diode. So if your system is underdamped, you will not need any diode and the current will not oscillate. Equations are given in the general form for any second order differential equation. The particular form of the solution will again depend upon what values you are using for resistance, inductance and capacitance. Let us solve one problem. So you have a second order RNC circuit. The DC source voltage given to be 220 volt. Inductor value 2 milli Henry capacitor 0.05 microfarad. The register 160 ohm. Initial condition of the capacitor voltage is zero and the inductor current is also zero and the initial. So the switch was closed and time t equal to zero. We have to determine the first what is the expression for the current I of t? So the first thing we need to determine is what is alpha given by R by 2L and all values if we substitute alpha is coming to be 40,000 radian per second. Second, what is omega naught, the damping frequency? So 1 by under root LC will give you 10 to the power 5 radian per second. Third, we need to determine the damping frequency or ringing frequency which is under root of uh, the values obtained as omega naught square minus other L square. So here we are getting 91.652 radian per second. And then we will check the condition of alpha and omega naught. So we find that alpha is less than omega naught and the circuit is under damped in nature. If the circuit is under damped in nature, the nature of the current will be given as in the form of e to the power minus alpha t, t cos of omega t plus a2 sine omega t. Remember this equation is sinusoidal in nature. So, the constants A1 and A2 we need to determine which is from the initial condition of t equal to 0 which gives A1 to be 0 because if we substitute here the t to be 0 we get the first expression of the current here the A1 will be 0. Next, if we find what is di by dt so we have the current expression uh, here this i of t if we uh, differentiate this we get di by dt here and put the time t equal to 0 here, we will find it as Vs by L. So, A2 we can easily obtain as Vs by omega r into L. So, this expression we can use to find the value of A2 which is 1.2 ampere. Now, both the A1 value and A2 value we can put it in the general expression of the current. So, we will get the final solution to the current expression. Second, uh, we have to determine the condi conduction time of the diode. So the conduction time T1 of the diode is obtained when the current I is 0. So 
if we put the current i to be 0, we will find that omega r t1 is equal to pi. So t1 is equal to pi by the omega r value and omega r is 91.652. So it gives to be 34.27 microsecond. So this is the conduction time of the diode, which is often again when the current is 0. So this uh, completes the lecture on diode switched RLC network. And then the next lecture we will discuss on the free wheeling diode. And so on we will move to the devices. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.